Daddy died when we were kids. Mom had to take care of five children, my elder sister and four boys. And to be frank, Mom had never attended any school. And as a widow, she knew only one trade, how to sew dresses and sell them on the market so that we can have food on our table. But one day, in that early ages, my mom indicated to us, the boys, at the age of 10, that we had to learn how to fend for ourselves. So she would go to the market and buy a bunch of mangoes, a bunch of oranges, a bunch of tomatoes, in basket full, then she will bring it to the house. And early morning before we go to school, mom will put it on the tray, then we will go from house to house, door to door, to sell those mangoes or orange, various products that we could sell from door to door. And Whenever we sell them, then we could get food for our table because here you will call it child labor, but we call it survivor. And, uh, and I, fortunately for my mom, the early 50s, a, a lecturer from one of the universities in our Kumasi city, came and married my mom. This time around, he had a bungalow to himself, a, a three-bedroom house, kitchen, everything, and we were moved from there to stay in the home, from one room, and then went and stayed with our stepfather. It is true of stepfather that a missionary paid us a visit in our home. And in conversation with my stepfather, he suggested to my stepfather that after his retire, retirement from lectureship, what was he going to do? My stepfather said, well, I'll enjoy my retirement benefit. Then he said, oh, I come from England, in Newcastle area, that if you can start some chicken farm, I believe that you would like it. He gave my stepfather a book to read how to rear chicken. My stepfather laughed and he put it aside. When he left and put it aside, I took the book and I read it over and over and over. And from that, I got to know how to raise chicken. And two weeks later, when the missionary went back to England, he sent 100 baby chicks to my stepfather with poultry feed and all the gadgets that could be used to rear the chicks. When my stepfather went to the airport to clear the baby chicks, he panicked and said, how am I going to take care of these baby chicks? And when he came home, I told him, I read a book and it has shown me everything as to how to raise those baby chicks. So I asked him to give me the garage. I prepared the garage and I took the book and I explained it and out of it I was able to raise all the hundred baby chicks to point of play. 
few months later, the Israeli government came to our country and wanted to give scholarship to people who will go to Israel and study animal science and agriculture in general. They had, they invited people to come for an interview to see those that they would select. And when we went to the interview, I was privileged to be on top of it. Why? Because none of them ever knows how to raise chicken. But because I raised them in the house, I have read the book, I had a scholarship to go to Israel. And that's where I went and studied animal science and industry. I came home with a diploma in animal science and then worked for the government for only six months. And after that, I resigned and worked with my stepfather to set up a small farm, raise his farm to about 100 bird farm. Then I resigned from his farm out of the savings that I had made from my salary, I bought 900 baby chicks, raised them, and in no time, within five years, I grew the chicks and I became the largest chicken farmer in the country. From there, I started using all the talent that I had from Israel. And I set up a hatchery to hatch my own baby chicks. I set up a feed mill to produce my own animal feed. Because I studied, I knew about how to raise them. And from there, I also set up an abattoir where to, to slaughter the chicken, dress them, and cut them up into portions like drumstick, breast, and all that, just like what you do here. And because of that, I became the biggest chicken farmer in Ghana. From there, I moved from countries to countries. I had the privilege of joining several organizations, and by His grace, I became the largest chicken farmer in the West African region. Where's the money going? Um, one of those choices over there, by the like, Ameri like American Red Cross, MSPCA Angel, or Michigan Human Society. One of those choices. We're from the Edward Everett Elementary School in Dorchester, and I have my third grade students here with me, and we're doing a paper bead necklace project for the One Hen program. The students take ordinary craft paper, regular craft paper, they cut it into triangular shapes, and they make paper beads out of it with a straw. So at the end result, they end up with a paper bead that's on a straw, and they slip it off, and they turn them into these beautiful necklaces. We're working on making making um, little different, different crafts to make a profit to donate to charity. We're either going to donate it to a microloan like Kojo, or the one fund for the victims of the Boston Marathon. So what are these used for? These are, these are keychains, and they're called monkey fists. And these are pins, like 
on my shirt, and they're made out of safety pins and little beads. Cool, thanks.